Ladies and gentlemen. And I've got a mic in my face. Take it down, take it down, you say. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Blade Talk. I am Niels van Bach with Black Dragon Forth and Forge. Forth. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> May the fourth be We're a bit late, man. But what I, who I have in studio is Mr. Steve Katz. How you doing? All the way from the US. Well, originally from South Africa. Then uh, Miami net. and uh, back for a couple of days. Yeah, you actually flying out again tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. So okay, you can last, make it, buddy. The last full day I have back home. Excellent. So let me just shift stuff around. Yeah, so we can actually see the guys. Boop, right. How's that? Excellent. 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 So last time you were here, uh, we were yeah. talking about uh, that that little shop, the new little that you're shop setting up in Florida. Am I correct? Yeah, pretty much. That's where all the hair's gone. Um, uh, two weeks ago, you had a full head of hair. I haven't had a full head of hair for a long, long time. Guys. <laughs> it's like we practice this. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but uh, so West Palm Beach, um, it's central in the in the city of West Palm Beach, and yeah. it's the first of its kind of a you knife keep on talking, studio. Man, I forgot about stuff. No problem. Yep. Um, it's the first of its kind. Going to be a knife studio, training center, a place for makers to come and use equipment. Um, just trying to set up a hub around the, the industry down there. When you say um, makers, is that specifically knife makers? Knife makers or artisanal artisanal blacksmiths. Anybody who d manufactures something from steel. Okay. So, that leads me into my first question. You're obviously a knife maker. Yeah. All right. Well, Do you refer to yourself as a knife maker or a bladesmith? I'm a bladesmith. You're a bladesmith. Um, okay. Uh, with the, first and foremost. With the occasional stock removal thrown in between or purely... Hitting stuff with a hammer. Um, occasionally, a little bit of stock removal thrown into place. I think varying your skills in the industry gets you different looks, gets you different fit and finish, and you kind of have to blend the two techniques to come up with what you do at the end of the day. And and you have a very 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 unique yeah. look to your stuff. Um, well, the, the the whole idea behind the knife making for me was more of a way of adjusting to a new home and a new place, somewhere where something I could keep my identity of my past of what I used to do in conservation and the knives were an easy route into that it was always been my hobby since I was 14 years old so it was just a natural progression I'm just lucky I managed to make a living doing this <laughs> lucky to have managed to make a living doing this yeah are you, are you serious um, it's not always about what you bring in at the end of the month but more importantly what you do with that month in my opinion but, i mean saying lucky that that you are lucky to be able to do what you do i, I find that i don't want to say offensive but uh, yes <laughs> i mean taking just just for me uh, taking we're doing a transition from from uh, full-time graphic design development uh, um and then deciding you know what i'm actually going to drop that side of business which is really making me good money to go and risk everything and start making blades was not luck that took a crap house oh, full yeah. of work i'm talking late evenings and and man it, it ah. became a 24 7 thing where when i ran my own company that was an eight to five right yeah i suppose you're right look i i, I had a um, a hard time in west palm beach florida keeping a job okay um so i was working for school food programs and there were temporary positions of three months a year so knives quickly became a way that I could get out there and get earning a living and providing for a young family that it's so a nice little there. side hustle. Yeah, it started off as a side hustle on Facebook, Instagram, like everyone else began. Yeah, yeah. And um, it took a, a, an event in a job that actually made my mind up to go full time as a maker in the States. So you slipped your mood? Totally. <laughs> At the guy gave him back the paycheck and walked out. <laughs> All right, man. Um, no. Uh, so, we have uh, um, a couple of guys in the shop wanting to pop in, but no. I was just stay on that them. side. No, stay on that side. Uh, uh, so, what we're doing is we're going to go into a couple of questions. You're not allowed to see no, right. you, you had your <laughs> time with them, question. man. <laughs> um, so, full-time, part-time? You're obviously full-time. Full -time. Okay. Um, generally, what kind of knives do you make, brother? So... I started out generally making a very rough finish um, 
more of a, a, a primitive style blade with a lot of textures in them. Okay, what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going to stop you right yeah. there. Um, I'm going to transition into uh, the first slide, all right, and then you can talk the guys through sure. there because I think this is a, 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 a very good idea of what you do. Yeah, it was by no means the only knives that he makes. Yeah. Uh, but are these your best sellers? These are my best sellers. Okay, so um, and that gives you an idea of uh, the, the style that we're talking about. All right, brother, shoot. So basically, I'm trying to blend in the safari feel. So I'm bringing in a lot of stories that I've learned working with tribal communities. So the cookery for me is a blade that just takes shape naturally um, on the anvil. Um, I like the curves of it. It gives, it gives a blade a good feeling, and especially when you're trying to attach some, something primitive. It's got a good working feel to it. Um, so the carvings on there are the uh, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil monkeys. Unfortunately, uh, you, can't, you can't see the, the speak no evil, which is behind the, your the, back. Yeah, that is the speak no evil. <laughs> um, so it was a three-piece kit that I did for uh, a few people in the knife community. Um, this set went off to the, uh, the president of the Safari Club International. Oh, sweet, so man. So it was a... a a, a, a great publicity deal for me yeah. um, considering that my main share of my market falls within the ex-South African community that is in the United States as well as the hunting community especially the guys that come out here every year to hunt or travel um, seems to be a, a big pull to my product okay so aside from that we're now going to step over into the marketing side of things all right so, uh, so how did you or when did you realize that the Safari Club uh, Member, well, is is more of a market for you than trying to find a guy on Facebook or on Instagram? Um, that's a tough question. Um, see, Safari Club for me was a gift that was given to me by Nathan Remierson from African Customs. He yeah. allowed me to come to my first Safari Club and gave me a huge section of the booth. Um, in in being there coming from that industry in my past it was very easy to attach to the clients that were there okay. it was like being at a normal travel trade show or something like that which so, is obviously something you've done in the past yeah 100 yeah. percent um so kind of the idea was born just before then um when i saw no african feeling knife in the industry um i came to blade show as a guest in 20 uh, 2013 when i first got to the u.s and I saw nothing that really grabbed my attention or what I would want as an eye. So I okay. decided maybe that would be the route for me to go. Is with, that one mine? Yeah, I think. Perfect. You got the milk. Thanks, man. Um, so, so, so you didn't see what, what you thought that market needed was a, an African looking knife. knife. Yeah, well, it still performs, still does its job as a knife. I mean, a lot of the times with the carving knives, to get the carving onto a tang takes a lot more engineering than it actually looks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sometimes the knives are more artistic than fully functional, but they will take abuse. Um, Excellent. But so, do they cut? Yes, they like do. Like we know, um, a knife has got one function. 100%. Um, and that is to cut. To Secondary cut. is to be the ramp, ramp model. 100%. Uh, it took me a while in the beginning to learn about edge geometry. And again, most of my stuff was trial and error. Yeah. Um, there's no smith until I found a year ago in West Palm Beach that was working with me. Oh, excellent. And um, I found a gentleman by the name of Peter Hill, and uh, he brushed me up on all my basics again. And now I can say the knives are a lot sharper than what they used to be. <laughs> excellent, man. So uh, that, that is actually a nice leading, leading statement. Um, so four more qualifications. Uh, are you a member of the American Blacemen Society being in, um, the, uh, in in the States? My year starts next year. Okay. Um, as far as being a member, I've only signed up two years ago at my second blade show. All right. So you are an apprentice member. Yeah, apprentice okay. member. Okay. So uh, next year, you're going to try uh, doing J's? Um, I think I might take a year and practice more. I okay. My metallurgy is a little bit more behind where it should be, um, yeah. just from the trial and errors yeah. that I've gone through. Yeah. But, yeah. No that, one is, by the way, same. no one no one can tell you when you're ready. You need to know when you're ready. But aside from when, when, when you decide to do that, yeah, um, starts with planning, sketches, That's it, the drawings. And, and the drawings. 
It's like you want to build a building. If you don't have plans, well, you're not going to get a structure. Mm, and you don't want to change the plan halfway through. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, but anyway, so uh, let's see. So we've covered what, what made you decide what to uh, uh, when to start making knives, and we've kind of spoken about uh, um, the Safari Club, and you obviously yeah. you go there fairly regularly. Is there only which Safari well, clubs? I, I'm a member of the uh, Fort Lauderdale chapter. Okay. And uh, it's the second largest chapter of the Safari Club International. A lot of their members live in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, West Palm Beach. So I'm very busy with the local community that's down oh, there. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, but I heard that you, you, you can't go to Vegas or a show in Vegas. Well, the, the, the in, the, they have a conference for all chapters that happens once a year in uh, either one year in Las Vegas and two years in Reno, Nevada. Ah. Um, the two shows are completely different animals. Um, really? completely different animals okay las vegas is just wild and frivolous i mean everyone just wants to buy everything <laughs> which um, is cool right yeah that, that's why we go and, and the one in reno is much more um, reserved uh, the one in reno is more about the dedicated hunter oh, okay the guy who's wary of what's going on in the hunting industry and not that he just wants to go and do what he loves to do but he wants to help the industry it, it's an important industry in conservation oh excellent um, Excellent. So all that tells me is that you've done proper market research. Yeah. Okay, so number one, understanding who you are selling to and catering for that niche market. That's the key. I mean, um, That's especially what... in America, being the market so big, yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of easier to nicheify yourself and nice. find the people. And also that you can... a lot more difficult to sell because your your, your audience is so big, yeah. so diverse. Um, um, the one week this knife will sell and then you reckon well i'm gonna do this for a while and then it's well ex- when that next batch is done uh, you can't flog them that's exactly and you can't figure out what the hell the thing is a hundred percent so you i mean that's why i like the freedom of the one-offs and the artistic stuff because it allows you to really express where okay you're then from. we're going to go into the next thing all right so being from south africa you uh kind of have brought well, back the legendary ikpa. The Iqua, I can't even pronounce it. The Iqua, all right. Uh, and then uh, there's a, a Tnobkiri or a Nobkiri. Uh, what that, else is in there? Well, that actually is called an Iwisa. 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 All right. Which so, is what? So, like all Zulu weapons, the sound it's they a, make. It's a knob on a stick. A knob on a stick that when you hit somebody on the side of the head, that goes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not joking. He is not joking. That's uh, right. the technical term. Yeah. Um, okay, so talk us through those shields. Obviously, those are something that you've been doing for a while now. Yeah, for about two years, I added them into the um, framework of Kilimanjaro Creations. The right. way I looked at Kilimanjaro Creations in the beginning... So we need to just stop there. Kilimanjaro yeah. Creations is your company. The, is the company right. name that I... So have. it's Steve Katz Customs working under, under Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro Creations. Creations. Pretty right. much. Um, Steve Katz is still afraid of using Steve Katz. <laughs> Steve Cat should get over himself. What does my wife say? Take a tablespoon of cement. <laughs> that and is, hard enough. That is a worthy say. <laughs> There's another one we talked about last night. Sorry, man. Um, okay. About uh, building a little bridge and get over it. <laughs> Which I thought was a more a girly thing. No, I like the man up buttercup. Man up buttercup. Yeah, I yeah. agree. But, but you're doing that. Trying to. I'm not trying. This is not rugby. This is knife no. making, right? You either Agreed. do it or you don't. Well, to get up and do it is the first step. Exactly. To continue to realizing do it that you have a problem is the first step to recovery. There is no recovery for this. <laughs> I'm telling my wife. It's only management, man. It's only management. Okay, so selling your knives. If you if you don't do Safari Club, all right, and you don't deal with dealers. Okay. Um, so how, how do, do you get? I I focused in America more on the local market than the entire U.S. as my market. Okay, so that market is then is West Palm Beach in South Florida. Okay, it's, it's a very eclectic place. There's a lot of uh, Latino influence, yeah. and with that brings a lot of Afro fusion to it. Um, a lot of the South American cu- cultures have big African influences to them. So you kind of attach certain things. A lot of times I do um, the West African stuff, and that seems to be really, really uh, interesting, uh, an interesting market to play with. Yeah. Um, but everybody now knows the history of South Africa. A lot of people have traveled here over the years. So they look at my stuff more as a, mem- a, a memento of when they came here. 
So that's my main market. I'm looking at the guys that are hitting out homes that they call rooms. Okay. And um, uh, personal home, uh, home designers and office designers. There are a lot of guys that are tending towards the African look yeah, yeah. for their products in the US. Because what I'm picking up like is, is, is that you okay. are literally making or creating a subset or an extremely specialist niche market yeah. for yourself. So aside from just making knives that are usable uh, yeah. for the, the, let's call it the hunter out there yeah. and uh, the yeah. collector. And, and it, maybe 30% of my business. You are now going into home decor yeah. as something that you could put on a mantelpiece, oh, yeah. uh, hang against the wall and, and purely just for decorating. Decorate, yeah. Um, it, it was an easy market in, West, in Florida to get into. Um, Man, it's freaking brilliant, buddy. It's a sort of aftermarket. But so, you're still making sure that those pieces are functional? Yeah, 100%. Um, Excellent. So it doesn't matter whether it's a decoration, in. you can still rip it off your mantelpiece and, and go and slice spheres. that piece of bolt up. With those spears, I guarantee it, they're the best home security in West Palm Beach. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right, so uh, we're going to go into... What advice would you give for a new guy when I say a new guy, a guy that already knows how to make knives, all right, but are battling to get rid of his knives. First advice I give is make it your own. Um, put your own personality into the blade. There are a lot of blades out there that are, I hate to say generic, but there's yeah, yeah. no soul in them. You can see the maker just saw the photo, drew it out, and stopped and moved it out. And it's the, the same knife that looks like every other freaking yeah, knife on the set. Yeah, so you walk around a knife show and you see 90% of them look exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same, and they're probably similar materials. So the personality in the knife at, at some point in the industry gets lost. Yeah. And I like, I don't buy a knife from a maker because it's the knife. I'm buying because I like the maker. And I've got a, a huge respect for the man because I've either watched his work or have learned from his, his work and has added to my repertoire of influence. Okay. So... I think personality and making a blade personal in your style is very important in this industry right now that's exploded in the last four years. It's just absolutely phenomenal, man. So just on that point, what I want to do is I want to showcase that there. So if you're talking about unique knives, and knives has got personality, right? Um, you've got a definite look, man. Now, there's a lot of guys that are doing the, the, the flint nap the look of it. and yeah. the texturing. Um, I find it's, it's very easy to make that knife. Um, maybe because I've been playing around with that technique and trying to develop it myself over the last six years. Yeah. But I find it enables me to get a, a, a nicer flat grind, a nicer grind lines, and things like that. And I'm not looking for the perfection in the knife. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I'm, well, obviously it is... In my style, it's perfect. On that, on that style. But to uh, uh, an, a maker of your caliber, you can see the rough the roughness to it and but and like you know part the of roughness the takes a lot of freaking time to do man no. um took me a while to figure out the, the tools to use and how to do it so talk me through the the one on the left sorry guys we are pointing to the screen that's just off camera right so so it looks like we're we're like crooked eyed yeah we're, it's so, there yeah so the kyber saw well, the, the africanized kyber sword um so, so it's your interpretation of uh, what's traditionally referred to as a kyber sword? It's a kyber sword. A okay. Arabian style. Oh, nice. Weapon. Um, it's about, overall there was 18 and a half inches. All right. So in, uh, my math's gone terrible. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, and then, again, just trying to create that feeling of taking a blade into where we grew up, right down in, the, in this area around here, and, and using something that would be functional. So I played with the machete idea, the yeah. hanger idea, um, and remembered when I was a kid in Mauritius watching them cut sugar cane, and they used to use these thin tip blades. And the point would go literally right down, even that might have been from years of sharpening it on, on stones, or yeah. more, but the tip would be so elongated, and they would just and go down the whole row of sugar cane. Well, I see a, a very thin long blade gives you a very whippy blade whippy blade yeah a and very fast blade that's and if you want to cut sugarcane on the go guessing that that makes sense yeah as versus a big broad heavy machete yeah we're just yeah who's gonna tie out first 
<laughs> you not the sugar cat. Exactly, exactly. All right, man. So the so, bottom one in there is a Puko um, type of a, a play I did on the Mora blade, just trying to perfect the zero degree bevel and edge. Ah. Teaching myself a bit more edge geometry. Uh, look, 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 the, the zero degree bevel well, is a term that I do okay. not agree with because zero means zero. There is nothing. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. And it refers to not having a secondary bevel on the edge. Yeah, on the edge. That I, I kind of get. Okay, so it's, but it's calling it zero time. means that there's nothing. Okay. You Obviously, have an edge. I watch a lot of stews. And if you so. if you cut that edge in half and you measure that, that's going to have a degree. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a 15 or a 70 so degree good. edge, just not. It only no, has no, a it's primary. It doesn't have a secondary. Second bevel. Degree. That's yeah. Yeah, awesome. but the zero degree bevel thing, I reckon that is some other dude's idea of blood marketing. Blood groove. <laughs> yeah, that's the blood exactly. groove thing. <laughs> and it, it, when, I, when I speak to my good mate Stuart, um, who kind of started using this on his Pucos, right? Uh, man, well, he doesn't even get upset anymore, which upsets me. Well, that's where I kind of think I get it from, because I do watch a lot of Stu stuff. Um, oh, he's good. It's he's a his... good dude he's been, obviously been an influence on you yeah, big time because every time you come back you come visit well, i owned one of stew's knives from about six or seven years ago all right um and it's still my favorite knife in my little personal collection excellent man i actually have a couple of them as well damn it damn it and the uh, fact is when i started making i never knew stew was literally as the crow flies maybe five kilometers from my it, parents drive it's always like that always it is right. always always like that all right so couple of questions what do you like most about knife making the actual process itself um, forging of course is always the way I process a lot um, process what's going on in my family life in America yeah um, it's a way I get to just escape and shut down but the best thing of all is the finished product and the story I get to tell with that that, that that's what I'm after is the stories um, we all have our little quirks in what we make yeah for me I look at on the pieces there um just just on the, the giraffe bone handle i mean that i picked up in kruger national park brought it back to johannesburg processed it myself so that's on the, the big, big on the big on the, on the big right. knife yeah all right and the bolster on that is? um that's brass, brass. solid brass it's solid so is that a full tang or a hidden tang that is a full tang that's a full tang okay excellent man so uh let's just get back to uh showing you our full faces okay Sorry, that, that is my technical skill. You remember what I do for a living. You baffled me with that computer already. <laughs> yeah. So, is there a knife that you've made in, well, since you started, that you are most proud of? So, one, one that pops into your mind. Doesn't matter what it looks like, whether it was the first one or the second one, or the last one you made, but I need to understand, why are you so proud of that piece? Um, I'm proud of the first five pieces I did for my first blade shot. Um, I had nothing to work with on West Palm Beach. I had a Harbor Freight 1x30 grinder. Yeah. Um, I had a home-built little suit can forge. And yeah. that's all I really... And, and a railway track anvil and two hammers I bought for $15 at Harbor Freight. And there you go. And that was me made. Um, so those sets of five was, was uh, one spear and four blades. Yeah. Um, that really... For me kind of set the standard or the look i was going for so i remember you had your first blade dude I, you just wouldn't shut up i had the best fun <laughs> ever look I, mean, I, I i thought i could talk a lot until i met this dude <laughs> well that's the travel and tourism you know when you've got a busload of tourists and you've got to talk about a giraffe for, an, for 45 minutes <laughs> um, so you reckon those five do you have photos of those um, five? i think i do somewhere i can see if i can send you one quick all right but, but we'll, uh there th was we'll make aside from that it man be, it would be probably on the kilimanjaro creations facebook page somewhere very close to the bottom okay so obviously um before the day is out you're going to just repost though oh definitely. yeah yeah most and definitely. just say most put out of five knives as per as per inter uh, dodgy interview right <laughs> <laughs> dodgy <laughs> so i mean when i know how you got started right um what would you suggest um anyone kid grown up 80 years 140 doesn't matter if they feel physically strong enough to take up up a hobby what would you suggest they do and this is a leading question 
would you have them spend time on the internet looking at youtube uh, blah 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 even god forbid go to a library and read a book or go to a class doesn't matter how skilled the maker presenting the class is you, you've got to get your first experience somewhere so a class obviously is first choice um being it, it might not be the 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 um the technique you need to learn at the time, but it's the experience of being in the forge, of hearing the ding of an anvil, smelling what the steel smells like when it comes red hot. There's those things you you can't do unless you've had an experience. Um, I wasn't lucky enough to have a class until I met you a year after starting this. So um, I well, definitely Moses say me after that, you still at it. I, I'm addicted. Um, <laughs> totally addicted i mean there, there are days where i get antsy when i don't make things um, it's weird it's, it's so weird. to get back to the thing so you'd much rather have someone go into a a forge uh where someone guides a class and uh and, and teaches them yeah, yeah. Uh, or do you even just a brisk experiment uh, a lot of times in the u.s when we do the, the gun show and the knife show circuits yeah there are guys outside with their little travel travel forges and oh they excellent actually kids, doing demonstrations and they let kids hit on some steel oh, and stuff cool. like that and um especially with peter hill the man I, the man i know in florida um he's he's come up with a little cowboy hat that he makes and gives those to the kids it's like a metal one yeah that's and freaking really, awesome really cool you're going to have to uh, send me a photo there, I'll buddy. send you a whole video of the whole process. Okay, so, I mean, this is a, a bit of a how long is a piece of string, how deep is a hole question. On average, right, yeah. have you ever timed yourself making knives? Yeah. I think everyone kind of do, does, but they, they well, don't normally say what time they spend on blades. How long does it take you to make an average knife? Um, oh, that's a really an average question. knife is very tough for me because average for me is the artistic stuff yeah because um, i do a lot of that do you have any production blades um i do so the one design design zero one no that, no nothing. i've stayed away from that all right skip that question now uh, <laughs> but i'm looking to get oh, there so inspiration that that's a thing that's come up yeah. quite often in the last two weeks on social media that i picked up where guys are, are kind of feeling that they're not inspired they're sitting in the shop and they're sitting there and they, they just can't get their asses in gear and actually start making and they're not happy with the production stuff that they're doing and they want to blah blah blah, blah. what do you do when you hit that that come, slumpy come, on come back yeah <laughs> <laughs> no um see for me it's easy because i i look at this craft differently it, it for me it was a product of homesickness in the beginning yeah. and it still is so it's a way again i come into my forge i switch on a little bit of zulu music and good old johnny Clegg, like every good jewish south african boy plays but you um, that, that's actually family right um somewhere down the line yeah. okay. cousins married cousins and, yeah and that's how we get there but um an influential man i mean taught me struggle history in high school so that that's a very cool thing um but it's easy for me um because I, I miss what I miss from here and I'm able to make it there, which kind of soothes the soul a little bit. Excellent, man. I've got no idea how long we've been at this. No idea at all. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes or so. I yeah, think. but anyway, so, long story short, let's carry on, man. So, uh, I want to do a couple of, of just... Here's that coffee. Like, Quick fire shots at you. There's no better way to drink coffee than out of a prison enamel cup. Prison enamel cup. That's what my dad used to call them. Every time I used to do this camping. You should ask so your dad how he knows. <laughs> my dad's been around. Man. It's a camping mug, man. Yep. Yeah? And in the shop, it's the only stuff that kind of lives. Because you drop a ceramic a, mug, it breaks. It breaks. Honey. This one you can drop 50 times. I've done it a few times. Yeah, I've had too many coffee cups on the work table. And they're also the ceramic ones, and you don't really see the colors too well, the liquids. <laughs> and I've drunk some weird stuff. All right, so let's do it. Uh, flat or hollow ground? Um, Only flat, one. Flat ground. Excellent. Uh, lots of hand sanding or uh, machine finishes all the way? Hand sanding. That kind of explains a lot. So you like hand sanding? Yeah, I do. Damn, a lot of processing goes down. <laughs> Stainless or carbon? Carbon steel all the way. Excellent. I like that. What do you think of stainless as a guard material? Um, it works. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, forging or stock removal? Forging. 
All the way? All the way. Damascus, yeah. non-Damascus blades? Tending to go to non-Damascus again. Tell me why. Firstly, in my work, I don't find Damascus suits the, the feeling I'm going for. The style for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then... Also, the, the joy of making something. Damascus sometimes gets a little bit stressful, you know, chasing those inclusions and those cold shots. And on a mono steel, um, the process is just phenomenal. I mean, you, so you're you, telling me it's because it's easy? Not just because it's easy. It's because, for me, I get the, the look I, I go for more out of the mono steel than of the Damascus. Okay, steel. well, fair enough. Then. Uh, follow a fixed blade. Fixed blade. What do you carry? I carry a... Uh, Kuno Ritter pre Boca knife. So, Solinger steel, but it's an antique, antique, antique. That's the one you got from your dad, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's a cool little freaking knife, man. But I, just, uh, I saw on social media you well, came across the second one? No. So this, the second one I've come across is the antique, which I'm carrying. And oh. my dad's got the newer one. So you yeah. took his knife back? I gave it back to him. Yeah, well, you're going to inherit that in any case. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, hopefully not Ho soon. Hopefully not soon. Hopefully not soon. Uh, full tang or hidden tang? No, no, no. Tough one. Quick, 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 quick. Hidden tang. Okay. Um, <sighs> burger or fried chicken? Burger, all the way. Bolsters or no bolters? Bolsters. Hunting or fishing? Hunting. What? Um, deer, pig. I'm water. glad to hear not quail. I do a lot of duck hunting. Duck hunting? I've it's, never done that. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, how many pickup trucks have you owned? Ever. Two. Only two? Only two. And you're from Africa? Yeah. Well, I tended to go towards the Land Rover and the Suzuki Samurai Jeep. The Land Rover, I, I could agree with. The Suzuki Samurai Jeep, I, there's nothing Samurai about that Jeep. I drove that thing from Joburg to Nairobi, Nairobi to Cairo, and Cairo to Morocco. But yet you got a three flat flat tires, three uh, years in a, a row just visiting that's me. that's a Jeep Wrangler, not a <laughs> Suzuki. Okay, <laughs> good, good point, good point. Uh, how tall are you? So I am 5 foot 11. So, yeah, I'm lost on everything else. How many yeah. times do you eat pizza a month? That's like a twice a week occurrence in America. Serious? Yeah. Dude, and you're still a skinny ass dude? Again, I do a lot of intermittent fasting in my diet. Um, you see, that's your problem. Well, again, <laughs> no, I'm very joking, man. I'm very joking. There's two type of people in this world. There's those that live to eat and those that eat to live. I just eat to live. Man, you see, I'm, I'm on this planet to experience food. That is it. Yeah. When I, was in the I will travel stop game, forging I a blade if someone offers me a burger. <laughs> yeah? I'd let that burger get cold. Not that. Coffee? Yeah. With, uh, touch my coffee, that'll be issues. <laughs> so, um, what is the longest amount of time that you ever spent working on a single knife? Yeah, no, that's a bad one. 25 days. 25 days? Yeah. That was I very just, quick. Just couldn't... Um, for me, I think I struggled with okay. that. Build. No, I'm saying very quick on the answer. 25 okay. days. So it's obviously yeah. a psychological thing that you still haven't gotten over. Totally. <laughs> that build... It kick your ass? Totally. Every which way. I think I carved the figurine that I was using four times. Serious? Yeah. Just kept on cracking in the tank. Just couldn't get it to slide into place. And it was 25 consecutive days? 25 consecutive days. It was uh, during the six... Uh, so it takes me six months to make everything for Safari Club. All right. Um, so it was at the start of that. And I think I was very over-ambitious in the beginning. I should have waited till I was midway through because I would have had more muscle memory. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. So 25 days. Yeah. It was a heartache. Damn, dude. Sleepless nights, the works. We got it done in the end. Okay, so uh, the last one. How many knives in progress have you got in your shop? So at the moment. At the moment now, I have 12 pieces that need to be finished and done and shipped off to the clients that I deal with. All right, so all of those are on order? Yeah. Or are there a couple available? Um, I think there's probably about three available. All right, so uh, on that point, social media. All right, so where can the guys get you? On Facebook so as Facebook Steve Katz? Steve Katz or Kilimanjaro Creations. Creations. And on Instagram, and exactly the same. Instagram, Steve Katz the same thing. and or Kilimanjaro White Creations. Boy works, works White Works, works to me. Oh, on, on Instagram, on Instagram, I saw that. Yeah, but on Facebook? 
Facebook is just the Kilimanjaro Creations. Okay. You can also just type in Steve Katz. With a K. Right. A T Z. Yes. K A T Z. Kilo Alpha Tango Zulu. Yeah, well, you could tell them, not me. Kilo Alpha Tango Zulu. There we go. So we all get it right. And you do a Steve before that. Yeah, if you see this mug, you're at the right spot. You see a shield. Yeah, those Zulu shields we showed you earlier. Then you're at the right spot. Okay, we'll also have uh, at the bottom of this, I will have the uh, uh, links to your social media. Sure. Awesome. All right. This is the Website. Have you got a website yet? Um, I had one and then I shut it down because I felt I didn't really need, have the need for it. But now I'm uh, regretting that decision. Right. It's um, like printing right. a business card, handing out a couple, and, and then taking all the rest and just tossing them. Tossing them. That's pretty much what I did two years ago with that website. All right. Um, so you are going to be working on a new website. Actually, right? It's actually uh, in the works. As with we the speak. freaking multi build click 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 website things out Go there Daddy. at the moment dude no, go daddy in america is just the platform it's mm -hmm. got a site builder yeah everything excellent mm -hmm. and it's cheap um it's about 40 40 or 50 dollars a month no crap i'm yeah, talking cheap i'm wanting like two dollars a month that's i mean i'm sure they're out there yeah because all you daddy, need is well the, the, the website ease, is depending the on how much money it. you spend that's right. it um i mean you can get a full-blown commerce system and i showed you yeah. full-blown i can sell crap online for 25 dollars a month and that's yeah, I mean, so a static after, website after for that, $40. Down, I've been working mm. to get yeah. that up. So basically, what I'm saying is you need one place which forms a portfolio of work right. where mm -hmm. you can send clients to, not necessarily to buy, but to go and research you. One place where everything is on there. Because social media is it's, just that it's social. Yeah. It ticks over every single time, it's not static. So you can't go and research anymore. Agreed. And that's why your website is so important. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, do you have a an email address? Yes. Kilimanjaro Creations at gmail.com. Okay. So there's uh, the second issue I have. With Gmail. With Gmail. Yeah. You can't sell yourself as a pro with, with a Gmail, Gmail account, man. I'm with you. It's like going Hotmail, Hotmail 20 years ago. 100%. I'm totally with you. And I, I need to readdress that. Yeah. If anyone says Hotmail, you kind of you should be rolling your eyes and go, oh, crap. You want me to take you seriously? Same thing with us. Again, yeah. with, with the market that I deal with, most of the guys are word of mouth. Yeah. Um, so I looked at what I was dealing with and the website and carrying that, working from home and all of that. That was and then. This, this is now. 100%. Yeah. All right, and then that will also give me an insight onto uh, what you're doing in the forge, the, the new shop you're setting up, right? That's that's going to be full front and center to everybody when I get back to this farm. Excellent, man. Steve, brother, yes. I'm going to call it a day there. Pleasure. Thank you for popping around for the well, second time. I left my cell phone charger here, so yes, I've been so you had to come back. Plugging into the car line. <laughs> but absolute pleasure having pleasure, you, man. Bro. Absolute pleasure having yeah, you. You go home. Have fun, uh -huh. and the next time I see you is a blade. Great show. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. I've got the table booked already. So uh, you guys go and uh, look up Steve on Instagram. Follow him on Facebook. Go and have a look at what he's up to. Um, and that was it, yeah. Mr. Steve Katz, Niels, from Africa to the US, back to Africa, and leaving tomorrow back to the US. Sixteen-hour flight, man. Yeah, it's fun, but you do what you have to do. Uh -huh. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Right, man. Have fun. Have a good Cheers. Day. So that was me, Niels Verbach, Black Dragon Forge, um, here with Blade Talk with my good mate, you Mr. Steve Katz. You see why it's the red chair? Because it's a dangerous yeah. position to be in. And now he's just up and left. <laughs> well, 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 me. You're back in. Oh, I'm back in. Okay, so now you can leave. The red chair, okay. I'm out. <laughs> see you guys. Cheers.